the history of portraiture is so kind of like, in my experience of it, it was, it was like a whole bunch of dead white people. So like, what does it mean to put a living brown body out into the world in this context? In a history where black men, their bodies have been criminalized, villainized, and sexualized very explicitly in the way that they're portrayed in media or in history, I wanted to think actively about how do I create a narrative that is in opposition to that. Having a direct gaze was about how do they live in the world outside of this moment and command space. Oftentimes they're occupying white-walled or white-owned spaces a place where they're not able to verbally dictate for themselves how they're going to be engaged with. I make these large-scale portraits, larger-than-life paintings of people in my community. As my community has changed, the images and the people that I'm painting kind of evolves with that. So it started with my base in Denver. I would paint pictures that I was taking of students in the classroom, or I'd paint my friends and family. And then I went to school at Yale asking for people to pose for me. I say that to say that it, it originated with my community from the very beginning. As I moved to Harlem, it was very natural and easy for me to begin to see those that I encountered on a day-to-day -day basis as the new subjects, or that I wanted to give a, a voice to or visibility to. The pulse, the history, the like legacy was just like vibrating through me. For my first few weeks, maybe I wasn't as inclined to introduce myself or make eye contact. I did the like, natural New Yorker thing where you kind of put your headphones in, you look down and you're getting from point A to point B. And I found that I was already doing a disservice to myself and my experience of Harlem. So there was a day that I was like, okay. I grabbed my camera and like set a goal to just like be out in Harlem for a few hours. And the first person I encountered was this man, James. He was just decked out in this beautiful brown suit and his top hat, stunning and glowing. And it was a painting laid out for me and I was a complete idiot if I kept moving. From that, he was like, yeah, have you hit a Michael across the street? Like, Glassman Mike would probably be willing to do it. Then he was like, yo, do you know Charles? Once I got permission from one person and like a positive endorsement, so to speak, it was like all of a sudden people were willing to share me with their community that they've had for years. I was thinking very explicitly about memorializing and the honoring of a person in the context of painting. These are living monuments of people. The history of portraiture, is, in my experience of it, it was like a whole bunch of dead white people. So like, what does it mean to like put a living brown body out into the world in this context? I wanted to bring the people who occupied the streets outside the museum into a space that they oftentimes had not visited. When people feel that there is room for them, whatever that room is, that you're genuinely listening, and those are the moments I just get brought back down to why this is important. How do you find what it is that you're passionate about and to just like go for it? As my mother tells me often is like, I have been really lucky to find my soul's code early. And the world has these like wonderful ways of bringing everything back home. 10-year-old me would have never thought that when I was going on a field trip to the Denver Art Museum that they would dedicate space to me and the work one day. Thank you.